Why iPhone technology is not of this earth. This is fantasy content with elements of creative writing. Science fiction. Have you ever thought that iPhone technology is not of this earth? It's not earthly, just like smartphones and smart TVs. If it has crossed your mind, know that you are not alone. There are several fictional versions that try to prove this conjecture. One of them is this one below. The Titanic, the famous ocean liner that sank in the North Atlantic Ocean on April 15, 1912, after colliding with an iceberg, brought strange things to the background that no one expected or thought they would ever hear. Some 70 years later, the seabed that still houses the great ship has brought to the surface a new world of technology, iPhone technology. Many research expeditions were organized to find the wreck, but the great depth where it's located at about 3,800 meters depth and the suffocating pressure of the water down there made the efforts frustrating. Finally, on September 1st, 1985, the impossible became possible. Since then, thousands of artifacts have been recovered and are on display in museums around the world. However, on one retrieval mission, something incredible happened. Two of the robotic, unmanned submersibles explored the wreck, collided with each other due to mishandling. On one of the two, control was completely lost, so it began to sink. And as it was carried by the currents of the sea, it was quite far from the hull of the Titanic until it hit the bottom with a wave. Technicians from the surface made several attempts to regain control, but without success. After a while, when the, the raised sand settled, one of the cameras of the badly injured submersible recorded what looked like shiny metal that was almost completely covered by anemones and other types of marine plants and animals that maintained a symbiotic colony. At first, those in charge thought it was a ship that had been wrecked years ago, perhaps hundreds, but it was not like that. The metal was shiny and showed no signs of decay. They sent another deep dive to explore the site. The searchlights indicated that what they were seeing was a part of a fuselage. Gradually, by scraping away anything that had taken root in its porous but well-polished surface, it was revealed that the sunken object was considerably larger than both submarines combined. Externally, it was intact and round. It was a record. It was actually fly. Uh, actually, uh, it was actually a flying saucer. It was a disc wedged into the seabed. When the officials informed the company about the discovery, it started a new mission parallel to the Titanic. The money, however, was not enough. Moreover, the new mission had to be kept secret. Funded funding came from Apple and, and Steve Jobs who had good connections with the company involved in retrieving Titanic artifacts. The wreckage flying saucer, the wrecked flying saucer was never recovered from the water world it was in because the technology and technical means of the seabed were not capable of unblocking it and ultimately retrieving the now secret object. However, smaller submarines located the entrance to the interior of the alien craft and entered. Gradually, they detached and brought to the surface what could be stripped. Among many others was the iPhone technology. Not, of course, in the form we know it today. It was much more, light years away, than what was marketed. Simply, Jobs and Apple experts managed to decode a very small part, almost infinitesimal, of the communication technology used by the extraterrestrial alien pilots on board that craft. Apple's problems peaked in 1985, the year the Titanic was discovered, and it ousted Steve Jobs from the company, although he was one of its three co-founders. Thus, in 1986, he founded Next and, brought, and bought Pixar from George Lucas, producer of the series of films such as Star Wars, Indiana Jones, and others. It was no coincidence that in 1996, Apple, which had originally helped finance the launch of the sunken flying saucer, bought Next and EXT, bringing Jobs back and elevating him to the position of chairman, a position he held until his death. 
All these years, Steve had his hands on alien technology that only in the late 90s his people were able to decode, bring it to human measures, and finally apply it to the iPhone that was first introduced in 2007 when it paved the way for all the actions required to build and manufacture smartphones around the world by many other companies that copied and adapted the new technology to their own data. Although from the above some facts and some circumstances may seem to match, while at the same time the persons mentioned are real, the whole story is a product of imagination and fiction, has nothing to do with reality. The whole idea arose from a related topic on the forum of iPhones and videos which received several critical comments. And this is translated from a Greek article for you. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.